Good evening and welcome to This Week in Turkey. As the Environmental Impact Assessment Report for the Kanal Istanbul project has been approved by the Ministry of Environment and Urbanization, Istanbul Metropolitan Mayor Ekrem İmamoğlu has outlined 15 reasons to oppose the project while also announcing the municipality's withdrawal from the cooperation protocol. On December 23, Istanbul Mayor Ekrem İmamoğlu announced that the municipality is withdrawing from taking part in the Kanal İstanbul Cooperation Protocol. We are withdrawing from the Kanal İstanbul Cooperation Protocol that was signed by the previous administration, İmamoğlu said at a press conference referring to his predecessor from the ruling Justice and Development Party. İmamoğlu's announcement comes simultaneously with the finalization of an environmental impact assessment report for the project and its release for public review by the Environment and Urbanization Ministry for 10 days. Citizens will be able to offer their recommendations about the project within this period. İmamoğlu has been a vocal opponent of the project. He has repeatedly said carrying out such a project will be death for Istanbul. On December 25, he outlined 15 reasons to oppose the project. One of the reasons for his opposition to the project is a possible water shortage Kanal Istanbul could cause. If the project is realized, Istanbul, which has been existing for 8.5 thousand years, will lose both its under and above ground water sources. Let alone the other 14 reasons, this reason on its own stipulates shelving the project, Imamoğlu said. Besides a feared possibility of drought, Kanal Istanbul will trigger the risk of an earthquake in the city, İmamoğlu cited. Taking the history and data of 120 years, any structuring along the canal's route creates huge risk for human life, because earthquakes are an unalterable reality of this region. The soil structure is prone to landslides, he said. İmamoğlu also said that such a construction will have economic impacts on the citizens, as it will lead the way to more taxes while pushing up the costs of Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality. Underlining that such a project will violate the Montreux Convention, which protects Turkey and countries bordering the Black Sea, the mayor said that Kanal Istanbul's impact will violate seven more international agreements. İmamoğlu also cited the extinction of indigenous fish species, destruction of Istanbul's historical heritage, increased traffic congestion, and the increase of Istanbul's population as other reasons to oppose the project. Known as the Crazy Project, Kanal Istanbul will be a 50-kilometer Bosphorus-like artificial canal that will connect the Marmara Sea and the Black Sea in the north of the city. The project has been on the government's agenda since 2011. Kanal Istanbul has also been criticized by experts over its potentially devastating impact on the city's ecology. The World Wildlife Fund Turkey released a report by experts regarding Kanal Istanbul's socio-economic, political and legal aspects. The report highlights ecological concerns. The report aims to share the anticipated risks of the project's design and application with the public. It advises that the project be evaluated in light of scientific knowledge and common sense. The report states that Istanbul is not only an economic center on an international scale, but also holds ecological value on a global, regional and national level. This fact entails that ecological values should not be overseen. The project is not only said to be a major investment, but is also described in terms of the biggest engineering operation Istanbul's nature will come face to face with. Kanal Istanbul is positioned as the last step in a process filled with mistakes, leading to the conclusion that it has become a crucial choice between the canal or saving Istanbul. The report is critical of the way in which the development of the project took place. Different scientific experts were not consulted and the public was not informed about the process. The series of projects, which began with the third bridge, continued with the Istanbul airport and will conclude with Kanal Istanbul project, are emblematic of the defeat of the principle relating to protecting the natural environments of the city. Experts have been warning against the Kanal Istanbul project ever since it has been proposed in 2011. The construction of this waterway would turn the delicate ecological balance in the area upside down, increasing the flow of the surface currents from the Black Sea and drawing industrial waste from the river Danube into the Marmara Sea. At the same time, the canal could decrease the undercurrents into the Black Sea, which could eventually poison the organisms there. Once the canal is completed, Istanbul would be surrounded by water on all sides, and this will prove disastrous for a city that lies on a geological fault line. 
Besides the increased risk, if an earthquake strikes, some say it can also create defense vulnerabilities for Turkey's largest city. The creation of a new passage linking the Black Sea to the Marmara Sea raises significant questions of international law, since the Bosphorus Strait is considered as a crucial strategic waterway by many neighboring states, particularly by those with coastlines on the Black Sea. This evening, we have Dr. Savaş Karabulut on our Skype line. Dr. Savaş Karabulut is a member of the Istanbul branch of the Chamber of Geophysical Engineers of Turkey, as well as a member of the Polytechnic. Good evening, Dr. Karabulut. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Good evening, and thank you for your invitation. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Karabulut, you and your colleagues at the Polytechnic have also uh, released a report on Kana the Kanal Istanbul project. Could you provide us uh, with the uh, certain headings of this, uh, of this uh, report, as well as uh, tell us how the environment will be affected by the project if it goes, if it is greenlit? Okay, thank you again, uh, and thank you for your invitation. Uh, my name is Savaş Karabulut, and I'm a geophysicist. Uh, uh, before I am a lecturer in Istanbul University, Department of Geophysical Engineering and Division of Istanbul, and I am a member of UKTEA, TUMOP, and the Chamber of Geophysical Engineering and Polytechnic again. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, the, this, there are many headings about this project. Uh, firstly, I would like to explain uh, development steps of the project. Uh, Canal Istanbul. Uh, today, uh, as a geophysicist and geoscientist, I think uh, that is important task for us uh, to protect nature and the earth. Uh, we have some responsibilities to nature and humanity. Uh, moreover, uh, I would like to talk uh, today uh, as a uh, uh, not as a political party leader like uh, CHP Imamoğlu by Mayor of Istanbul and AKP President Erdogan or partisan, but also uh, as a social scientist uh, with a natural scientist identification and meticulousness or rigor. Uh, now, uh, I would like to express at the beginning of my speech, uh, this project is not a channel project. This project is the real estate and rent project. It's not channel project and not transportation project. This is only real estate project. Mm -hmm. There is uh, only one channel from them, uh, namely is the government and their partisans and capitalist class uh, or rich men and some imperialist forces. Uh, and that is unearned un un un un un un uh, income and rent. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, there are, uh, I say there are many headings uh, about this project. Uh, uh, now, today, today, I want to try to summarize this project because the project is so big. Uh, maybe you know uh, 106,000 uh, pages. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you add the attachment, this project is uh, 60,500 pages. Uh, now, today, uh, nowadays, uh, it, uh, anybody peoples goes to the, the municipal uh, this in, and the mayor buildings and uh, they give this some uh, uh, some papers uh, to them. Uh, it is my responsibility uh, to make criticism and explain the scientific results mm -hmm. uh, when uh, such a project will come into practice. Like me, many people who live in Istanbul are unhappy today because scientific workers learn about the damage that will result in the city in my aspect with published data. And now today, if you talk with anybody people and or if you talk to any scientists, anybody people don't know about the project. People only think that only this project is transportation project, uh, but it's not correct. Today, I want to explain of the real situations. Uh, firstly, I want to introduce this project. Uh, the name of this project is Channel Istanbul Project. Mm -hmm. uh, also named as the crazy project before the, by the Recep Tayyip Erdogan to construct a new waterway between sea, Marmara Sea and the uh, Black Sea. The channel proper, if I want to say it about the properties of the channel, the channel length of uh, 45 kilometers length, 
and the width of the approximately 200 meter and depth of is the 20 meters. Mm -hmm. The channel opening the, the opening of channel begin in the district of Avjlar, north uh, of the northern part of the Marmara and uh, southern part of Istanbul, and uh, opening there and continues toward the north uh, along the Küçükçekmece, Küçükçekmece Lake uh, and Başakşehir uh, district of Başakşehir and Sazlıdere Dam, and it is passing Arnavutköy and ending in Terkos and Durusu Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, Terkos and Durusu and Sazdere is important for us, uh, for water uh, sources, mm -hmm. and which is the southern boundary between the coast of Black Sea. Uh, now, uh, but if I ask them, if, if, ask, if I ask the, anybody people uh, why uh, this project is needed, uh, anybody people don't answer this question. Uh, uh, if you ask me uh, uh, which problems will be faced uh, yes. with this project, yes. I'm going to explain this in a, a number of subtitles. There are many subtitles, and today I, uh, I try to summarize this one. Uh, firstly, uh, the salinization and extinctions of water sources in Istanbul, such as Durusu, Terkos Lake, Sazdere Dam, and Groundwater, uh, will occur. Mm -hmm. People who live in Istanbul will face to face with water storage in early futures uh, with this project. Citizens need approximately 20 to 25 percentage of the sources in Durusu and Sazdere, which reach the water. And secondly, there are the other problem is soil contaminations. Uh, water, agricultural places, uh, grassland, and leaves, uh, leaves bridging area is the, uh, will be dangerous for this project. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, there is an earthquake risk will be a problem as a result of this project. You know, after the 1999 earthquake, all of people and scientists focused the Sea of Marmara. Mm -hmm. There are big uh, dangerous weight in the Sea of Marmara. Uh, this is the earthquake. Now, people, if you talk to people in the street, uh, people always think the earthquake problems, but uh, people always afraid uh, the earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Now, we have uh, two elections. Firstly, if you uh, select the channel, uh, we don't prepare the earthquake. But if, we, if the government or municipality uh, select the earthquake preparedness, uh, the, anybody people don't have rights. And for one, mess of uh, fish and sea, mess, uh, mess uh, that of fish or sea creatures. Mm -hmm. Total volume of extinctions area is uh, 30.4 million square meters. Due to the, they cannot reach uh, enough oxygen sources, they will be killed with this project by the hydrogen sulfur. And five grasslands and forest region will be shaved on project roads approximately 45 million square meters. You know, you remember, uh, the North uh, Istanbul Road and the third airport project mm -hmm. applied uh, in the area, many trees is cutting and the people always protest this one, these situations. And the other problem is tsunami and swap stab stability problems. With these excavations and leading to sharp slope in a risk in the northern part of Sea of Marmara mm -hmm. and southern part of the Black Sea, because mm -hmm. you know there are many slope the northern part of the Marmara. Mm -hmm. You know if you if any earthquake occur in the Sea of Marmara, especially North Anatolian Fault Zone. Uh, there is a, there are the, another, uh, the other uh, dangers of the, the, the, the other hazards of the uh, tsunamis. Okay. Uh, and if uh, the excavations is looting the, this sharp slope, maybe is uh, tsunami uh, is occur.
not not uh, without the earthquake. And the other problems is archaeological sites. There are many archaeological sites uh, on the project road. There are many cultural and historical places uh, will be destroyed. Maybe you know uh, Yarumburgas cave, mm -hmm. which which is, uh, was a life station of human civilization since 400,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. 400 years ago, uh, first human living there. Uh, first uh, people uh, comes to uh, North Africa and passing the European side, use this road and live in the Yermburgas cave. And the other one is the Batonia city. Batonia city, uh, people living uh, approximately 9,000 years ago, and there is a medical center uh, for the people. Uh, this Batonia uh, antique city uh, place location on the uh, north eastern part of the Küçükçekmece Lake, uh, and uh, there are many uh, historical places in this area. But if we uh, accept this project, all of uh, archaeological and uh, historical places uh, goes to under the sea, and like uh, like Hassan Cave in mm -hmm. south eastern part of the Anatolia in Batman. There are many projects, uh, and maybe it's the geological problems will occur. Or will occur. There are um, uh, different kind of geological unit in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's Ergene, uh, Isaniye, Kırklareli, uh, and Alivino de de deposit. Uh, we have to know this uh, formation properties because uh, maybe yesterday uh, uh, the president, uh, the mayor of the Istanbul, uh, Imamoğlu, say there are. Uh, there are many kinds of the geological units, geological formation in this area, mm -hmm. and then some formations, uh, properties of stratified limestone rock, and uh, there are uh, some fractures, uh, rock with their join, and if the project applied this road, uh, maybe salt water, Salt water passing this the mm -hmm. uh, ground water or the, the other uh, Drusu Lake and Sazdere because uh, the Recep Tayyip Erdogan say that uh, it's not problem for us because if we use the some uh, solutions uh, for the sanitization, but it's not correct. It's not possible to apply the, any solution for sanitization. It's mm -hmm. sanitization is so important for us because. There are many water sources in this area. And uh, tsunami, I say again to tsunami, tsunami is a risk after the excavation material is removed from the underground. Uh, I explained uh, before, uh, but the Leo, uh, sea, of, uh, level, sea level is changed mm -hmm. because if you look the sea level, the Black Sea uh, changed five centimeters uh, decrease and Sea of Marmara uh, increased it two or three centimeters, centimeter increasingly uh, upper the uh, mm -hmm. sea level. And you know, there is a the other problem, global warming problems uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I continue this uh, Dr. One. Karabulut, if, if you don't mind, uh, I, I would like to interrupt you here. Despite all this catastrophic uh, results that would uh, lead, uh, would, would happen as a result of Canal Istanbul, the Environmental Impact Assessment Report has passed, it has been approved. So who actually prepares this report and how do they manage to gather experts to sign it? No, it's a, the, I say uh, now, the, this weekend, uh, a report is published uh, on the internet. Uh, this report is a environmental impact assessment mm -hmm. report. Uh, this report prepared uh, the Chinar Engineering Company. Uh, this company established uh, by Selahattin Haji Ömeroğlu, who has owner of uh, also bigger energy company too. He previously uh, has been tried to botash corruption and earn big money with their completed environmental assessment report, approximately 24 million Turkish lira. 
all of report is positive. It's not uh, a negative report. All of chat report, all of the environmental impact assessment report is positive. Because uh, they, this people is the uh, AKP partisan. Okay. It's not uh, positive. And then there are uh, many uh, scientists uh, in this project. Uh, maybe I, we know is 200 academic person and engineering uh, uh, prepare this report. But we don't know this academician or engineering mm -hmm. because uh, if anybody, I think uh, this academic person uh, not uh, use the scientific data uh, because yesterday the AFAD in Turkish Earthquake Center uh, published a report uh, in the news. They say uh, there is no active fault in this area, but many scientists uh, published uh, any scientific paper in the scientific community, there are many active faults in this area, like Küçük Çekmece Lake. Mm -hmm. In 2006, some uh, Norwich people, scientists uh, published this paper. Uh, I prepared before some newspaper about these situations. Uh, and they say uh, there is a, some active fault in this area, and there are many aluminium deposits in this area. And if we, if you uh, study in the aluminium deposit, and there are many uh, faults passing this area, and uh, they say, uh, Afat say, uh, there are uh, if you use the Turkish active fault map, uh, but update uh, 2013 by the MAT MTA. And they say there is uh, no active fault in this area. But I know uh, this area, especially because my PhD thesis in this site, European mm -hmm. site of Istanbul, there is uh, no any studies applied this area. Because if you remember again, 2011, the one earthquake occurred in this uh, eastern part of Turkey. And there are uh, some hidden and buried fault in this area. And META or any um, government office don't know about this fault. Now, again, this situation is continue. Again, there are many fault, and especially this Çekmece fault is active fault in this area. Mm -hmm. And again, if we, uh, and Afat say, uh, there is no earthquake problem in this area. But if we look the uh, Switzerland in Basel city, uh, maybe five years ago, uh, there is a project, there is a forced geothermal project in this area. Normally, uh, Basel or Switzerland in a seismic zone, there is no earthquake in that area. But uh, the government applied this the forced uh, geothermal project in this area, and 4.5 magnitude earthquakes occur in there. Mm -hmm. And if uh, there are many pro problems in the area. May, uh, for example, in, uh, there are is, is also sick problems because uh, maybe six million, six billion ton uh, mass is the excavation in the area, okay. and I think so. Maybe 0.5 bar uh, earthquake looting, extra earthquake loadings apply in the earth structure, okay. and so maybe this project applied in this area. Maybe big earthquake is maybe is the uh, occur. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, before, firstly, all of government office and the chat report and environmental impact assessment report have to calculate all of risk. Is also sick risk or earthquake risk, but there is no any situation, any calculation in this report. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Karabulut, we'll be right back with you after our next news video, which is also okay. regarding uh, Canal Istanbul project. Uh, the project okay. has, al has also been raising concerns relating to the Montreux Convention um, and how it will affect the international agreements uh, uh, that, Turkey has been, that Turkey has signed. The Bosphorus Strait is considered a crucial strategic waterway by many states, particularly those with coastlines on the Black Sea. Since 1936, the Straits have been subject to the Montreux Convention, 
which regulates the transit and navigation in the Straits of the Dardanelles, the Sea of Marmara, and the Bosphorus. The convention gives Turkey full authority and guarantees the free passage of commercial vessels in peacetime. It restricts the passage of naval ships not belonging to Black Sea states. The convention bans all aircraft carriers from crossing, including those from the Black Sea states. While the convention gives Turkey a privileged position in the management of the straits, it also grants commercial vessels the right of free passage in most circumstances. The convention becomes complicated in light of Kanal Istanbul. Its advocates say that the high traffic passing through the Bosphorus makes a new route necessary to reduce the risk of accidents. But since commercial vessels can already pass the straits for free, and the canal would almost certainly require tolls to justify the cost of building it, the Turkish government would find it extremely difficult to force them to change their current routes. Another concern is related to whether or not the convention's restrictions on non-Black Sea states will apply, or whether Turkey can govern the canal as it pleases. So we're back with uh, Dr. Karabulut. Uh, Dr. Karabulut, what do you think uh, will happen in regards to this convention? Will uh, Do you think that the uh, project will potentially violate the Montreux Convention? Yeah, uh, there are, uh, I, first of all, I would like to say, uh, I would like to say there are many problems of this project. Uh, firstly, I want to say some uh, headings of this one. Uh, there are uh, excavation problems. There are cemetery problems because uh, there are some cemetery in the road of the project mm -hmm. will be flooded by seawater flooding, and new taxes uh, will come uh, maybe, and uh, external dependence maybe impossible, uh, and uh, there are uh, earthquake problems, transportation traffic problems, and Montreal Convention problems, uh, and urbanization problems. Agri agricultural fields and livestock breeding problems and there are many problems and dust the other problems water management waste water policy contamination their treatment uh, project is all of one is the problem for us but uh, if you ask the conventions the Monte conventions uh, should be discussed uh, with this project uh, but international community mm -hmm. because you know, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, Organization, NATO, and especially in USA, army, leak out to, from the Black Sea. Hmm. As a solution from the Turkey government by Erdogan, because I think so, uh, the Erdogan uh, has a new solution for them. Uh, if this project is applied, this area, this project will help to organize a new scenario to rise to volume of the war tamars that exist in the region, maybe. I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. What is the aim? But uh, we always say the peace against the war, say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course. And finally, Dr. Karabulut, uh, what type of responsibilities do you think lie uh, with the mayor of uh, Istanbul, uh, Ekrem Imamoglu, in uh, properly informing the people of the real effects uh, of, uh, of the canal? Yeah. Now, finally, uh, if the government uh, or er President Erdogan uh, insists on this project, people who live in Istanbul or, or Marmara region will resist the government project. Mm -hmm. There is no solution. There is no uh, any uh, solution. Uh, they don't uh, accept this project and don't see this new channel as a priority in Istanbul people. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, finally, um, the, and, and moreover, we will the, be insist for uh, peace too. If this channel project will be applied as separate to each other of European side of Istanbul, imperial forces will be wait for this door as rub hands in glee to. Opposition of this project uh, with this meaning will be a way for completed independence too. The new mayor of Istanbul, uh, Mr. Ekrem Yemoglu, have been fighted with their speech to Erdogan and their government MP too. But it is not enough for us. People should resist on this project and make a sound if necessary they should create a human chain on this project road 
-hmm. And there is a, a many meeting uh, uh, nowadays. They, many civil organization or many chamber of um, uh, the meeting uh, organized. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, at least I would like to express that this project is not channel project. This project is real estate and rent income project. Uh, thank you for you. <laughs> thank uh, you, Dr. Wu. Invitation again. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, thank you. Thank you. In the fourth hearing of the Gizzi trial held on December 24, the court has ruled that the arrest of business person, philanthropist, and human rights activist Osman Kavala shall continue despite the call of a European Court of Human Rights for his release. During the trial, Kavala demanded an end to this unlawful and discriminatory practice. The value of my freedom is based on international norms. That is also what the ECHR ruling indicates. I demand an end to this unlawful and discriminatory practice, Kavala told the courts. Kavala has been in custody for more than two years, charged with attempting to overthrow the government by organizing and funding the Gezi Park protests. In addition to the charges related to the Gezi Park protests, Kavala also faces those related to the July 15, 2016 failed coup attempt. The Turkish court said it had decided to keep Kavala in jail due to the severity of the alleged crimes and was awaiting a response from the Justice Ministry on whether the ECHR ruling was final. The European court called for his immediate release two weeks ago, saying there was a lack of reasonable suspicion that he had committed an offense. ECHR rulings are legally binding, but Turkey has frequently not implemented them. Fifteen other defendants are on trial along with Kavala, who is currently the only one in jail. The next hearing of the case will be held on January 28, 2020. The Interior Ministry is preparing to launch an investigation into claims that the mayor of Ankara, Mansur Yavash, from the main opposition Republican People's Party, unlawfully sealed off the construction of two towers owned by former CHP deputy Sinan Aygün. The investigation follows a criminal complaint filed by Aygün against Yavaş and three other CHP municipal council members. Aygün claims Yavaş threatened to demolish the construction of the towers unless they were paid a bribe of 25 million Turkish liras. The ministry has appointed a property inspector to investigate the allegations. Aygün maintains the towers were designated as illegal by Yavaş after being refused the bribery payment. Togo Towers were sealed off on December 16 because they violated land rights. The tower's construction had begun during the previous ruling of AKP mayor Melih Gökçek. The CHP has shown support to Yavaş, while the party's Ankara provincial head Rufka Güvenar said that Aygün had launched a public operation instead of waiting for the legal procedure. Güvenar said that Aygün violated the party's values by contributing to political works and actions against the CHP's fundamental principles. The disciplinary action was launched against Aygün to expel him from the party, the provincial head added. President Erdogan has said that Turkey cannot handle a fresh wave of migrants from Syria, adding that more than 80,000 people were currently on the move from Idlib, where Syrian and Russian forces have recently intensified their bombardment. Speaking at an award ceremony in Istanbul on December 22, Erdogan said, if the violence towards the people of Idlib does not stop, this number will increase even more. In that case, Turkey will not carry such a migrant burden on its own. Erdogan added that Turkey was doing everything possible to stop bombardments in Idlib. A Turkish delegation traveled to Moscow on December 23 to discuss developments in Syria. Presidential spokesperson Ibrahim Kalun has said Turkey asked Russia to establish a ceasefire in Idlib. We see an increase in the violations of the Syrian regime in Idlib. We sent a stern message to the Russian side. They told our delegation that they will put an effort into getting the regime's attack stopped within 24 hours. We are closely keeping track of the process, Kalun said. Idlib hosts some 3 million people, including many displaced by years of violence in other parts of Syria. In December 2018, Turkey and Russia agreed to turn Idlib into a de-escalation zone in a bid to end the clashes between the Syrian army and the rebels. But the Turkish side says the regime and Russian forces continue to violate the ceasefire in the region, with hundreds of civilians have been killed since then. Kalın said on December 24 that Idlib is not just an issue concerning Turkey, 
but the whole world. We recall that the Russian side has a bigger responsibility here. We expect that the attacks end as soon as possible, and this is realized with a new ceasefire. This is our main expectation from the Russian side, he said. A three-month ban has been imposed on horse-driven carriages operating on the Prince's Islands due to a disease outbreak. The decision was made after it was determined that 81 horses on the islands were recently buried on the islands after succumbing to glanders, a respiratory disease specific to horses, donkeys and mules. Glanders does not have any known treatment and cure. Hence, in accordance with the relevant legislation, the animals were killed and buried on the island. The local administrator's office said that a quarantine has been put in place, barring the entry and exit of animals on the island in a bid to prevent the disease from spreading. The owners of the killed horses will also face some penalties, as the governor said necessary complaints will be filed to the prosecutor's office on grounds of putting human, animal and environmental health in danger. Around 1,500 horses are used for transportation purposes on the Prince's Islands, where motor vehicles are banned. Increase in administrative fees and the new minimum wage has been announced for 2020. Administrative fees for passports and driving licenses will increase by 22.6% for 2020. The cost of the Turkish passport will rise to 915 lira, while a driving license will cost 751 lira. The fee hike will be comparable to yearly average producer price inflation, which averaged 19.7% over the past 12 months, according to the Turkish Statistical Institute. Moreover, the Minimum Wage Detection Commission announced the new minimum wage yesterday. The net minimum wage will be 2,324 Turkish liras per month. This is a 15% increase from 2,020 lira per month last year. That's all from this week in Turkey. See you in the new year. Good night.